Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a basic form of differential equation known as a separable differential equation. So let me share my screen with you and we can get started. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice about this screen is that the font is huge. Yes, I'm trying to uh, increase my visibility for mobile devices. So if you're watching on a mobile device, please let me know what the experience is like for you. Okay, so let's have a look at the problem. We have got a differential equation over here on the left. It's a first order problem. Okay, so there's the highest order derivative is the first derivative. Dy dx equals e to the x minus y. Okay, so this is known as, as a differential equation. It's an equation involving a derivative. We want to solve that for the unknown function y, and y will be a function of x. Over here, we have a little bit more information. We know the value of the solution to this at x equals zero and the, the value of y at x equals zero is the natural log of two. So this is like an ODE or an ordinary differential equation combined with an initial condition. Okay, now this kind of problem can be slightly manipulated to put it in what's known as a separable form. So our ODE is what's known as separable as it is in the following form. Okay, so our separable differential equation is in the following form. Okay, so e to the x minus y, well, I can use my index laws to write it like this. Okay, now, the right-hand side here is a function of x times a function of y. Okay, so here h would be uh, the, uh, e to the x, and g would be e to the negative y. Okay, all right, so... Whenever we have dy dx equals this, a product of the functions with the functions uh, separated, then we um, can call this form a separable differential equation. Okay, so what do we do? We've now defined a separable differential equation, and um, how do we proceed from here? Well, the, it's a two-step process. We separate the variables, and we integrate both sides. So to even break it down further, you separate and you integrate. You separate and you integrate. You separate and you integrate. Let me show you what I mean. We're gonna take this, bring the e to the negative y down here and the dx up there. So we get all the x's and all the um, y's on the other side, on, on uh, either side of the equation. So I'm gonna, separate the variable. So that's going to come down here, all right, and the dx is going to come up there. All right, now when the e to the negative y comes down there, it's going to be dy over e to the negative y. So that's just e to the y. And when the dx comes up there, you're going to get this. Yeah? Okay, so we've separated, we've got y's and dy's on this side and x's and dx's on this side just through um, division or multiplication. The second step in this problem is to integrate both sides. All right, so you put an integral sign here, integral sign here, and then you want to simplify. Okay, all 
Okay, so we've separated the variables. We now integrate both sides of the equation, and then what we want to do is try to get some sort of form for the unknown function y. All right, so let's let's go through and do that. Over here, you integrate with respect to y, so I'm integrating e to the y with respect to y. So I'm going to get e to the y there. And over here, I integrate e to the x with respect to x. And, you know, these are indefinite integrals, so I probably should put a constant of integration here. Now, I could put a constant over this side and a constant over this side. One constant is enough. Okay, if you're really concerned about that, you can put two constants in, but it's not necessary. One constant is enough. Okay, so um, let's uh, make y the subject here. So I'm going to take the natural logarithm of both sides. So here c is a constant. Okay, so if I take the logarithm of this side, I'll have log e to the y, that's going to be y. And if I take logarithm of this side, natural logarithm of this side, I'm going to have the following. Okay, now we're not quite done yet because what about this c? c could be anything here. And the other thing that we haven't done is we haven't used this bit of information yet. We've only worked with the differential equation. So what does this do? Well, this enables us to go through and pin down, in most cases, a precise value of c here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this, plug it into there, so we, so we know that when x equals 0, y equals log 2. So we go into here, put x equals 0, and set the left-hand side to uh, log 2, natural log of 2. All right? So let's put that on a new page. All right, so we make the left-hand side log 2 and we replace x with 0 in here. Okay, so e to the 0 is 1, so I'll get log, oh, sorry, that should be a c there, a c there. So the c comes down from there. Oops, sorry about that. Let me fix that up. So um, e to the 0 is 1, so I'm going to get log 1 plus c. For these things to be equal, basically I need this to be 2, so 1 plus c equals 2. So C will equal 1. Okay, so we've now formed a general solution which involves C, and now we've refined it through the initial condition to find a particular value for C. In this case, C was equal to 1. Okay, so now what we can do is replace C up there with 1, and then we've got a solution to our original problem. Okay. Thus, we have Y equals the natural log of E to the X plus 1. All right. Okay, so we're really happy now. We've solved the problem and um, uh, we've pinned down a solution. A good question now is how do we know that we've actually got the right solution? Well, let me show you. What I can do is take this and look back at my original problem, okay, and see 
if the derivative of this function really does satisfy this, and if at x equals 0, does this, and if x equals 0, does this equal log 2? Well, yes, it does. It satisfies that. And if you take the derivative of this, does it really give you e to the x minus y, where y is here? Well, if you do those calculations, you will see that these two equations hold. Okay? Now, this kind of problem, the differential equation combined with this extra initial condition, has a special name. It's known as an initial value problem. Okay? So that's a differential equation. It's a separable differential equation. And if you have some extra information like this, then together it's called an initial value problem. Okay, so let's just summarise the solution method for these special kinds of problems. First of all, we recognised that the problem, the, the differential equation, was a special type where you had a function of x times a function of y. In that case, you can separate the variables by division or multiplication, and then you integrate both sides. Two-step process, separate and integrate. And then, because it was an, an initial value problem, you can um, find the, any constants of integration. Okay? We realised we had a fo this form here for our differential equation. We separated the variables. We integrated, formed a, what's known as a general solution, and then refined it through the initial condition. All right? Okay. Hope you found this presentation useful. If you have any feedback, especially if you're watching on a mobile device, please let me know what your experience is like, or if you have any comments or suggestions, videos that you'd like me to do. I always enjoy reading your comments and chatting with you. Thanks again for watching. See you soon. Bye.